One of the problems with direct uh, posterior composites is actually understanding the uh, occlusal anatomy or occlusal morphology good enough. So when we look at the occlusal morphology of the upper molar, like we see here, uh, the problem is that it's so complex. No matter how we look at it, uh, as in usual textbooks or how we learned in universities, it just looks so damn complex all the time. So we can look at the fissures and the different fissure patterns and try to memorize them and try to understand how they work and how they connect, but it's really hard to transfer them to the actual composite we're working with because it's not a very nice drawing media. We can think about occlusal compass or different functional ideas uh, to understand why the occlusal surface looks like that. So it's really nice to know why we're making the tooth structure as it should be, but it's very hard to have and get, gather that knowledge and have it transferred into the composite. So what I'd like to show you in my workshop is actually how to deconstruct the tooth so it's nice and easy and easy to understand and easy to apply with composites. So here we have an upper first molar that's so complex if we look at it as a whole, but it's so simple if we just divide it into constructional elements. So take a look at that. Distal palatal cusp, a sort of triangular-like cusp, smallest cusp of them all, distal buccal cusp, quite a squarish one. Let's say it takes a quarter of the occlusal surface, mesial buccal cusp, mesial palatal cusp. There are various attributes that are so simple to understand and various uh, reference points that can get you oriented in the complicated occlusal surface that I'll be glad to share with you in the workshop. So your posterior restorations uh, will look like a part of the tooth, like actual restoration or not just like a flat blob of composite in the occlusal surface. So I hope to see you all soon in February in AES meeting and I'm Mendel Cascudales from Vilnius, Lithuania. See you there.